Let's take a look at some of the other things that you can do to images here. For example, I've got a folder called Kripalu, which is a beautiful place in western Massachusetts. It's like a retreat, and I do sometimes these walking photographic tours up there, and they're really kind of fun because the area is just so beautiful. And so I'm thinking I'd like to use some of these images in our Photoshop exercise files for this class. And this is actually how I do it anyway. I go through my images and move some, or copy them. And I've got an exercise file folder here. If, for whatever reason, I want this one, I think you know this, I can click on it and drag it and move it over there. But if I let go, the operative word is move. I'm moving it over there. I don't want to move it. I want to copy it. So if that's the truth, hold down the Alt key, and you'll see a little plus sign come up, before you let go of your mouse, and it will make a copy of it over in the exercise files. That would be one way to either move or copy an image, a very easy thing to do. If I decide I don't like the name DSC 2022, which is the Nikon way of naming files, I can click on it right now and give it a new name. But there are 112 images in the set. 110 are raw and 2 are JPEGs, and I really don't want to do that 112 times. So I'll explain how we do that in a second. If I'm looking for a particular file, now all of these right now have the same name, but understand if you're looking for a particular file and you know the name of that file, you can begin typing in the name. Let me give you an example. The two JPEG files are DSCN. Now I have no idea where they are. So I need to find them. So I'm over here. Just start typing DSCN, and eventually it will go right to them. So if your names are a little bit more descriptive than numbers, it would be an easy way to find exactly what you need. Let's go ahead and turn those back off again and get all our images. And we'll go back to the top. I want to name these images where they were taken by a sequential number. So what I'm going to do is press Control A to select everything, and I'm going to go to the word Tools on the pull-down menu and go right here down to Batch Rename. You'll notice we have a lot of stuff here. I'm going to click the minus sign on each one of these to collapse them up, and we'll start with just one thing right here. Do you want to rename them in the same folder? For me, that would be great. Do you want to move them to another folder or copy them? Up to you. If I come down here, the new file name will be Text, and the name is going to be K-R-I-P-A-L-U for Kripalu, but I don't want them obviously all named Kripalu. I'm going to click the plus sign here. I'm going to add something else. We're going to add a sequence number. Now in this case, I have under 1,000 images, so it would be fine to use three digits. But if you combine all my Kripalu images, I have thousands. So I'm going to change that actually to four digits. Preserve current file name in XMP metadata. What's that mean? Well, that means actually, and this might interest you, is a couple of weeks from today or months, you can decide you wish you hadn't done this, and that name will still be there, and you can restore it. I want them compatible with Windows and Unix, although I'll be honest with you, the way systems work today, that's almost not necessary. It's going to work probably whether you click those buttons or not. If you want to see what the name is going to look like, we can go right up here to the word preview, and it will show them to you. There they are, in sequence. Click OK. I should mention one other thing. If you want them in sequential numbering, but they're not in the order you want them to be up here, you can drag and move them around to actually allow you to put them in an order before you do the batch rename. We're happy with it. Let's go ahead and click rename. And take it a few seconds, not too long. There you go. You have batched rename them. Another reason I like using batch renaming is I will take still sequential shots, almost like claymation kind of stuff, where you have to put that in a program like Maya and then create the completed animation sequence. And it requires that the files be named sequentially. So it might be another reason why you might want to do something like this. The last thing I suppose is the destructive part. And that would be, for example, what if you want to get rid of one of these? Well, you just press the delete key. If you do, it's going to ask you if you're sure you want to do it, and it's going to move it in the trash. So you go, yeah, I'm sure. And then about two seconds later, you go, 
you know, I really wish I hadn't done that. Well, like anything else, we do have an undo. But understand, it's in the trash. It's not really physically gone yet. So if you have that, ooh, I wish I hadn't done that, you can go into your trash and find it there too. So we can change names. We can move. We can copy. We can batch rename. Do just about anything we want to. Manipulating images in the bridge just gives you more control. On to the next.